You are now listening to The Lasting Legacy Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Lasting Legacy Podcast. Please, before you uh, start this episode, subscribe to the YouTube channel because 88% of you don't even subscribe to the channel, but you watch the videos. So anyway, we have a very special guest today. We have Kenny Garcia, owner of Kenny G Films and TikTok Superstar. (laughs) <laughs> i don't know about that i mean <laughs> the algorithm has been bad lately I'll yeah say it, that much. it yeah. happens man you know you never know with tiktok it's the strangest thing ever i swear it really is i mean one you can have one video just go absolutely ham and then the next video get 100 views i know it's, it's so like trash. the more you put it the more effort you put into it the less views you get that's how it always goes i'll spend like 10 hours on a freaking edit and then that one does shit and Fif- then 15 views i have I'll to delete like it half an hour on one and it'll go ham <laughs> All right no, exactly. I, I cannot stand it. I feel like it's based off like how China's ecosystem is going and like how their economy is. And it's like, oh, dump the views. We don't need them, you know? <laughs> yeah. But uh, my name is David. I own David Took It, not to be confused with Kenny G Films. But, you know, it's kind of one and the other. And together, it's absolutely nuts. But uh, um, me and Kenny go a little bit like further back than like just all of years or something you know like just that. something little <laughs> like that but uh half your life yeah, yeah exactly you know photo video brought us back together so i'm excited to have him on before he uh you know disappears into the abyss for a little bit and then comes back again so it's it's tough scheduling this guy so uh um i'm just gonna ask you you know a few questions uh what what got you into this man can you go back like yeah so i started uh getting into editing actually first i did a little bit backwards than most people in this industry um, with Vine. So Vine, I grew a channel on there called The Dopest Drops, um, which I grew to 300,000 followers purely by ripping videos from YouTube and festival videos. And then I would take tracks that I liked and then I'd re-edit those into um, a six second banger for for Vine. And I did that over and over again. Um, And those were blowing up really quickly and it grew my channel really fast. And then artists were starting to kind of take Notice of my channel asking for promotions. Um, I actually met Telecast through them or through Vine. Um, I was a fan of their work or their music, and I was like, "Hey, can I uh, use some of your music for videos?" And they're like, "Fuck yeah, you can!" So I was using a lot of their music. Got to a point where I actually flew out there, met them, started to manage them for a short period of time. That didn't really work out, but we maintained our friendship and uh, still pr- pushed their music through. Vine and SoundCloud. SoundCloud I also grew a following on there um, of about 130,000. Uh, so I was doing promotions for various artists. I worked with Marshmallow, um, obviously Telecast, uh, lots of electronic artists yeah. in, the, in the scene. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I from there, I um, let's see, three years ago, I started taking filming really seriously, reinvested into a bunch of gear. Um, I actually broke my leg coming into 2020 and, um, little did you know? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And then, uh, from there, um, it was kind of my out for my dad's company. So I worked for my dad's company after vine went to shit. So vine ended what, like 2017. Yeah. Uh, and then I came back to Pueblo. I was living in Denver, came back to Pueblo, worked for my dad for a couple years and then broke my leg it was kind of my out from the company i mean i love love my family love my dad and what he's done with the company and he's been able to provide for us and it's amazing but that wasn't really my route it wasn't your Um, dream yeah it wasn't my dream so uh yeah even when i broke my leg i was hopping around on my crutches filming as much as i possibly could um started putting out TikToks, and then um, what were you what were you filming at that time really just anything I could, anything to build my portfolio. I mean, I I would go into restaurants, uh, fitness, anything that I could get my hands on to just get my work out there. Mm -hmm. Um, I was already confident in my editing because I've been doing it for almost 10 years. Uh, I think like seven years at that point. Uh, Yeah, so just teaching myself editing, watching YouTube tutorials uh, on how to shoot, and then, yeah, just putting out as much as I possibly could on, on TikTok and on social media and I look back now and I look at some of my old content, I'm like, wow, this is so shit. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. But I mean, but, at that time, you know, price reflects and yeah. it's a, it's a learning experience. And I mean, you have, even from that first TikTok to now, like you almost want to delete it, but you, you don't want to at the same time, you know, yeah, to you show your that progression. Progress. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, going back to TikTok, I feel like this is a very pivotal point 
since I knew you, you know, like as soon as you posted your first TikTok video, nothing was the same after that, you know? So do you want to kind of go into that? Yeah, everything really changed, I mean, quickly. So I think I made a, a few TikToks before I had one really do well. And that was the one here at the Spradley dealership at Chevy. I went in was like, hey, can I borrow a car for a few hours to shoot a video? And they're like, yeah, go ahead, they let me take a car. So went out, shot it for a couple hours, posted it on TikTok next day, and it got 130,000 views. I was like, shit, there's something here. Called my buddy up. I was like, man, what do you think I should do? I'm still working for my dad. Like, do you think I should say screw it and go up to Denver and try this at the Ferrari dealership? And he was like, bro, you have something. Just go do it. That's my friend Trent Lesser. Mm-hmm. I think you know Trent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so next day I went up to Ferrari and showed them that video. They loved it. They were like, yeah, they let me take out the brand new Roma. The Ferrari Roma was like just came out. And uh, that video ended up getting 4 million views. And uh, like the next week. Yeah, like yeah, the next yeah, week. Yeah. It I, blew I, up. I want to put that timeline out there, how <laughs> fast this was. <laughs> it was really, really quick. Uh, yeah, so that video, I had hundreds and hundreds of emails of clients all over the world that were hitting me up for content. Mm-hmm did some stuff for uh, like a gaming company out in Florida, a yacht company hit me up to edit a video for them. Uh, Dr. Kenodia out in LA, um, he does all the uh, nose uh, nose jobs for like the Kardashians. That's crazy. That's insane. um, Yeah, I mean, it was just like a snowball effect from there. And then I got to work with Lamborghini Denver um, for six months, had a contract with them. That was a pretty decent stint. Yeah. A lot of content, I'm sure. Yeah, it was a lot. It was four YouTube videos a month, um, five to six shorts for Instagram, and then photos for the whole month. That's insane. Damn, Damn. 40 videos? Four videos a month. Oh, I think you said 40. I was like, YouTube videos. Damn, they're really (laughs) pumping out the content, (laughs) huh? That would be like, (laughs) there's no way. Yeah, no, absolutely. I was like, like, damn, 40 videos. No, that's that's awesome. So the Lamborghini thing takes off. We, uh, We actually combined on a shoot, which is... Uh, that was one of my favorite ones. That was just the, a surreal moment. I think that was one of the first shoots with them. Yeah. The oh, yeah, yeah. The McLaren. The yeah, McLaren yeah. one. Or that was still for like TikTok, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't think, think your deal was signed. Yeah, yet. your deal wasn't yeah. signed then. Uh, you know, we had shout out Wade. We had uh, yeah. Wade driving the car, and it, it was just nuts. You, you would think driving a quarter million dollar car through downtown Denver, every girl would break their necks, but it was just dudes. Dude, yeah. Everywhere. Girls do that not care. Sense. They truly they don't. don't. Care. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're in LA, they might care. Yeah, no, exactly. Denver for, for a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's insane. So TikTok progresses, um, you know, is there anything else going on at that same time? I know you had your hand in a lot of different things. Um, TikTok's blown up. You got the Lamborghini deal. Yeah, I think, I mean, in between there, I still had like a lot of different projects. I was still trying to do as much creative stuff as I could. Uh, I think I was helping you with a couple weddings. Yeah, you yeah we, we were doing weddings. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was that was like the main focus, though, I think. And, and then just on the back end, trying to, you know, grow and, and connect with other companies and businesses and mm-hmm. try to get like little projects here and there. But that was like the main focus. Yeah, at the time. Abs- absolutely. So uh, I always look back like in a chronological order when I'm like looking for certain photos and you see the McLaren ones and then you see, you know, the ones we took in L.A., which that whole situation was totally crazy how. Um, you want to elaborate on how Telecast, you know, yeah. kind of made a comeback too? Yeah. So Telecast, I mean, they've been at it for seven years, uh, a little, little bit more than that, I think, maybe maybe eight years now. Um, still maintain that friendship for that entire time. Um, they started to blow up with the Lauren track. Actually, mm-hmm. that's that was like their first like big hit, which was March last year. Um, and they asked me to film the music video. David joined me on that. He took all the photos, and those were absolute I bangers. Was, I was excited. <laughs> I did not expect that. That LA sun hits different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she ended up posting, like, all your photos. Yeah. Um, Over the hired photographer. Just want you to know that. Yeah. Anyway. Love you, Clay. Sorry, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was that was crazy. I think that was, like, their first, like, the pivotal moment in their career. And since then, now, I mean, they, they worked with, yeah. you know, J-Lo and now Teddy Swims. Um all their tracks are going on BPM radio on Sirius XM. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it just like merged back together with my talents and their talents. And now I'm doing their content full time, their video content and photos on the road. Uh, just got done with the tour. Mm -hmm. Um, what is, what is tour life like? 
Man, it's it's mayhem, and and especially this, this your, one. The first stint. This was just like a taste. Yeah, this was just a little taste. So it was the two friends tour. Uh, they were a supporting act for the tour. Every show was sold out. So the crowds were wild. Um, in during the tour as well, I'm still working on the J Lo project. So mm-hmm. um, first two shows, actually Pittsburgh was the first show, and those shots were in the music video. So I I held off the music video for. Uh, an extra week with their team. I was like, hey, we can actually get real performance shots of the guys. This is their first mm-hmm. time touring in two years because of COVID. So I wanted to get like fresh shots of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I was able to hold them off for a week, film that show right after the show, went straight to the hotel room, started slotting in those shots into the music video until five, six in the morning, <laughs> woke up at nine, got it done by, I'd say two, three o'clock in the afternoon, sent it over to them, which was what 11 o'clock LA time Mm -hmm. and uh yeah they approved it and uh yeah I mean we could touch on the yeah yeah I mean yeah let's let's just dive right into it let's let's give the people what they want (laughs) um how did that come about okay so my timeline might be a little bit off because I don't have the boys to confirm everything Mm -hmm. but this is this is how it went down basically they asked telecast to make a remix for on my way um and then about a week later, Trevor and Kyle finished the remix. They go into the studio with Jennifer uh, to really perfect it because she had some changes she wanted to make. Um, finished the track. They loved it. Um, next, let's see, the following week, I flew out there, which was January 12th, uh, specifically for a roller hockey game that we're in. <laughs> Shout out to my boys. We're killing it. We're in first place right now. We got a big game this coming Wednesday. No so, big deal. Uh, I just, I'll be out there. I just yeah. fly out to LA for my roller hockey league. <laughs> yeah, so that's it's not Southwest either. It's probably like United or something. Nice. <laughs> no, no, no. It's spirit, man. Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lost six cameras already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spirit, man. I don't know about them. But uh, anyway, where was I? Uh, January twelfth. Yeah. You went out January twelfth went out there. Next day we had our roller hockey game. The following day. Uh, her team hits us up and they're like, Hey, we want you to come into the office to talk about content. That was really all we had for, I mean, that's all we knew. We were just going in there to talk about content. So we go in there, they brief us for a bit, this beautiful office, sky or high rise, downtown LA glass windows everywhere. All her, uh, awards are in there. They have a beautiful piano in there. It's gorgeous. But, uh, we get briefed for about half an hour go into the back room and talk with Benny and Larry. Benny is her main manager. Larry is the director of marketing for her team. Uh, sat there and talked to them for a bit. And then they phoned in uh, Jennifer. She wasn't able to make the meeting. Uh, so they um, FaceTimed her into the meeting. And uh, yeah, she was talking about just content, rolling out um, something between them and the guys, something collaborative on Instagram and social media. Um, I had posted the day before I made actually a little reel for the guys at the house at their house. Yeah. 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 It was just like a little video showing like them in the studio. And then I ripped the, the actual music video from YouTube. I screen recorded it and then put some of those clips into it and like chopped it up. I mean, I didn't think it was going to be a problem. It it wasn't because they were part of the track, but, uh, she loved (laughs) that edit. Yeah. (laughs) She loved that edit. And, uh, she was like, who during the meeting, she's like, who was, or who made that video that's on your Instagram. And, uh, they're like, it's our video guy. He's sitting right here. She's like, let me talk to him. So I'm on the phone with her and she's like, Hey, I love that edit you made. She's like, I have this whole idea, uh, to do a full music video, basically a similar concept as the movie weird science. And then have you guys seen that movie? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like two kids making a girl in their bedroom and then it brings her to life. And uh, did I mess something up? No, you're good. Okay. You're good. <laughs> they bring her to life through that. So um, she was like, is that something you could do? And I was like, yeah, hundred percent. And uh, she's like, okay, well, yeah, let's make it happen. And I was like, all right, done. Let's do it. And she's like, yay. <laughs> like all excited. <laughs> so how surreal was it to be FaceTiming Jennifer Lopez? Honestly, it was like, it felt like a dream. And when I, when I handed the phone back to them, I almost cried. I was like, there's no way this is real life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like, what is life at this point? Yeah. It's, you know. It was really surreal. And going into the meeting, the guys, I was asking them, like, you guys nervous? And they're like, no. I'm like, (laughs) how? Why am I nervous? They're like, like, are you nervous? I was like, fuck yeah, it's (laughs) J-Lo. 190 million on Instagram or something. Crazy number. Yeah. Wild. 
and then uh yeah after the meeting they're like you nervous now and i'm like no man this is my time to shine like this is what i'm meant for Mm -hmm. you know that's what i was made for so from there it was like straight into it next day they wanted to see a concept music video i wrote the script gave them a concept music video with the clips from weird science uh they gave me performance shots of unused footage on on my way the the official music video so i slotted as much as that in as i could i put text over every clip on what i planned on the the final edit looking like uh and they loved it and then uh i I was trying to figure out a way to to get to bring the guys into this like virtual world and i brought my oculus into town because the boys love it we they play it like every night (laughs) some beat saber yeah some beat saber uh what else were they playing playing in the metaverse (laughs) yeah what's the other one the hot shot is that what it's called i think so yeah yeah that's a good one but uh i was just like walking around in the house i saw the the headset and i was like man it'd be perfect for them to go into this like virtual world so right away i called benny and larry get on facetime with them i'm like hey i have this idea feel free to shut it down at this point, I had already talked to them about a few ideas that I had, and they shut them down like right away. So I wasn't expecting them to be like, "Yeah." <laughs> You're like, "So the McLaren's out of the deal." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we can't oh, put a McLaren in this. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, I called them. I told them the idea, and they loved it right away. And they're like, "Call up uh, Facebook right now. See if we can get a, a deal somehow with the music video." <laughs> Just call Facebook. You're like, <laughs> yeah. "All right, give me their number." Yeah. Hey, Mark. <laughs> me again kenny g (laughs) can you unmute my video and (laughs) yeah (laughs) send a couple oculus so yeah that was basically how that like idea stemmed and then they loved it right away the guys got home from a studio session and i was like okay we're doing this idea i'm gonna film this intro of you guys with the headsets and uh yeah the next day i had that intro basically done by the end of the day um but it was you know just constant every single day like that they wanted updates every day uh, I was receiving me. updates along with that. Yeah, just oh. insane amount of work that went into that. Everywhere you were at, if you were eating, you were you had your computer there working on it. Yeah, I was constantly working on it, constantly thinking about it, either on calls, uh, going over things with them, changes. Uh, it was every day. I think I had like ten different versions up until the final. That's insane. Yeah. That's so totally it was just insane. back and forth, back and forth for 35, 40 days. Yeah. That's that's a wild ride. <laughs> that's um, so cool. So I mean, if if you haven't seen the music video, go check it out on J Lo's YouTube channel, which sounds crazy <laughs> to even say now. But on my way, telecast remix. Exactly. Um, so Link can you talk yeah. about <laughs> filming her scene? It's it's at the very end. Okay, yeah. So the last scene, um, they wanted her DP, director of photography, to come in and film that scene because she's super specific on i mean it's j-lo I can only imagine one of the biggest in the world <laughs> so yeah. can't just have loose content of somebody like <laughs> Some that random, yeah dude <laughs> some random guy coming in um so they wanted him to shoot it uh he came in the night before to check out the, the spot and what shots i needed so they brought their whole team in for for me to direct and and to get the shots that i needed can you paint the picture of where this is? Okay, yeah. This was, is it a studio? Where is this? This was at Telecast House uh, on Magnolia in, in L.A., uh, in Sherman Oaks. And, uh, yeah, I mean, from they were like, Shoot, do we need a studio for this? Do we? What do we need? They asked me everything, and I was like, no, that's, this is perfect for the guys. I mean, the intro scene is in their house. so In their bedroom is what it looks like. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was in their actual house. And, uh, yeah, they – he – he came in the day before Jason, her DP came in at like eight o'clock at night, the day before the shoot. Uh, we went over all the shots that I needed. Uh, I gave him a little script that I wrote. And then, uh, next day they came in at eight o'clock in the morning with her whole team. Uh, people setting up for catering, they had food, they had COVID like, tests right outside the apartment complex. What in the world? <laughs> That's yeah. Crazy. That's nuts. <laughs> for one wild. shot. For one shot. Yeah. She was only there for hollywood An baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah but there was about 30 people there throughout the entire day they probably brought in a million dollars worth of camera equipment and for that one shot for that one shot you're yeah. like i shot the intro scene <laughs> on a sony a7 III. <laughs> which you know isn't cheap but it's no crazy rig you know if they're yeah. shooting that last scene with a red that's yeah. you know and i think they did have uh yeah they had two or three reds in the room that's insane yeah that's absolutely nuts um but I you mean, can't tell the difference No, in editing. No, you really can't. Um, now, on the back end, 
how does that red footage did they give you like here you go was no, it so color they actually graded? colored it yeah they okay they it. Co- i was gonna say because i know that's super flat profile and yeah that so would be a nightmare there's one shot in the final scene uh that i actually shot on my 7.3 and it's the door it's like a red door just like shaking mm-hmm. uh with like fog coming out from under it yeah i shot that on my a7 uh, a7 III and then I just matched the colors to their shots after they sent me so they they color graded everything matched it to the intro as mm-hmm. closely as they could and then I got that final door shot because it felt like it brought the story yeah absolutely uh, together a little bit better and uh yeah I just matched that shot and that was it really yeah damn <laughs> that's crazy I'm just surprised and that they had all kinds of food for a two second shot <laughs> <laughs> yeah we had we still have snacks from the shoot <laughs> that's insane yeah uh, it doesn't surprise me, really. It makes sense. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, everything to. has to be perfect with her, and mm-hmm. I mean, it's understandable for that sure. It's J-Lo. You know? That's insane. So um, so you basically, are you still doing, like, other side projects with other people, or are you mostly just working um, with Telecast right now? or most Mostly Telecast. I have yeah. some things in the, in the pipeline, but uh, mostly content for Telecast just right Just for now. them? Okay. Yeah. I mean, things have been just, like, craziness well, with them so yeah, i mean we're shooting j-lo <laughs> videos yeah. what else do you have time to do you know yeah. so, like can i can you shoot my wedding don't even open it <laughs> like, leave it on red yeah <laughs> that's insane um you know outside of like j-lo i mean these these are like massive milestones you have you know but personally like what are what are some of your biggest milestones that you've you've accumulated along i mean 100 percent the j-lo is, i mean yeah is by far the biggest one yeah absolutely um lauren gray that was amazing too and that i mean that was an amazing experience you were mm-hmm. there yeah no that was, was a great time. it was the craziest 48 hours of my life yeah uh, we took a nap woke up and it felt like a dream until we left yeah we landed and then what we took a nap for like a couple hours and then yeah. went straight to the shoot we had no idea where it was going to be at what conditions were going to be we were in the hood and they bring us into this crazy studio and that was it you know we didn't we had a kind of a concept um you know at the weekend had a song where it was like behind the scenes of a photo shoot and that i was like dude this is it and we kind of ran with it and you did your magic on the back end the things you do with editing are just absolutely nuts i don't understand you, it at all yeah. but uh yeah man that that was absolutely surreal and yeah. that wasn't even like that was just for content too we we didn't even plan on shooting a full music video no we we had you know the outside shots inside shots of three different outfit changes and you know, the world doesn't even know about, you know, 80% of what we shot that day. Yeah. You know, um, we ended up using like a car shot, you know, from a car that was in there randomly. <laughs> yeah. Like there was like a pink coffin in there. Shout out the Billy studio. That, yeah, that place is super really cool. wild. Um, but okay. So, I mean, obviously like the McLaren deal, you know, like this is, this all happened within a year, like literally yeah. to the date, like this time last year we were in LA shooting Lauren. So like this has been a That's you know crazy. a crazy That's a crazy like year <laughs> when you really put it all together like from your first TikTok to now yeah 13 14 months yeah I think uh, another I mean that was like the Lamborghini thing too that was like a huge deal for me a, a big pivotal moment in my career um, and that that whole thing like really pushed me to like treat this like I'm like oh shit this is like a real business like this mm-hmm. is something's I'm doing something right here mm-hmm. but um, I mean my whole I think my whole life, like I've, I've struggled with social anxiety too. And I think with that deal and, and the vi- the whole Vine th- or TikTok thing, like going into these places and being like, can I shoot a video? That's helped with my social anxiety and pushing myself to, you know, step over those boundaries and like actually, you know, make something happen and just say, fuck it and go in and, and make it work regardless of Put the situation. Put you back in control of your head. Yeah, yeah exactly. So no. is that kind of what you, you think was like the main driver of going from like first TikTok to now in 14 months is just the willingness to get outside of the box, outside your comfort zone kind of thing? Or? 100%. Yeah. Uh, and I think it was just like realizing like I'm getting older. This is like, this is what I'm meant to do. I know it. And just saying fuck it and like making it happen regardless of the situation. And I, I stress like, I can't stress enough to people that going out and just doing it is what's going to make it work. Like people will talk and talk and talk. But I'm like, just go do it then. Figure it out. Like, if you, if you want to go get a job somewhere, message 100 fucking people mm-hmm. on Instagram or wherever it is or whatever you want to do. Somebody's bound to say yes. Like, just True. make it happen. Yeah. So many people are so busy. They waste so much time planning, planning everything. And it's just or like, overthinking just, it. just go do it. Mm-hmm. And 
and because you're gonna suck at it no matter what you might as well start sucking you might as well start sucking now yeah you know what i mean and then start growing Mm -hmm. from that i know i in the beginning i had a hard time doing things for free but you kind of built your whole brand off of doing things for free in the beginning and you know it's paid it's paid itself back tenfold, you know, with yeah. opportunity and exposure and stuff like that. Like it's, it's absolutely nuts. So, you know, like if you're a content creator out there, you know, like in, it's kind of a passion project to put you in some of these uh, situations, you have to, you know, kind of do it for free, you know, yeah. in the beginning for sure. It's a very good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd say like half my projects, even up to this point were, f- were free mm-hmm. because I just wanted that exposure. I wanted, you know, that, that solid portfolio I wanted to work with. Still building it. Yeah. And still like, I mean, if, even if it's like, if it's worth it for, for my name and my brand, I'll, I'll do it for free. Absolutely. (laughs) If it's like worth it, you know, you're on those, on like the free stuff. Are you, do you like reach out to people like on social media too, to do some of the free stuff or is it, if it's like somebody that I really want to work with? Yeah. yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Cause I know like in Dubai, you went, you, you went to a couple of different places, right? And you finally found someone to let you shoot out there. And that was Similar free. To, I mean, I just I shot yeah. the, yeah. the car video for free. I think that's an interesting story too. You know, the Dubai trip, because that wasn't like your first stop for that car company, right? Yeah, that wasn't the first dealership. You know, you no. got a few no's before. Yeah, that. I got forty no's. I was. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and people get all sad over like three things going wrong yeah, in their thing. life. You can't you like know? get. <laughs> You can't get down on yourself if somebody mm-hmm. says no. It's like, okay, move on to the next. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. there's more people out there that'll that'll say yes to you or people, want yeah. eventually. You know, we tried to people. shoot a car video out in LA and it just the timing wasn't right, you know. We chalk it up as whatever. We got some Chinese food and we got over it, you know. <laughs> yeah. People um, will see you like in that Rolls Royce in Dubai and like be mad or something, not knowing like well, this was the forty first time <laughs> I've asked somebody, you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, what happened mm-hmm. was I I messaged forty different companies on instagram uh there was like four or five that got back to me i was having conversation with them but it just wasn't going anywhere we had two days left in dubai and we just drove around and we saw luxury supercars dubai on the side of the road and i was like pulling this place i'm gonna make it happen so i go in and just talk to the owner showed him my work um he's like yeah fuck yeah let's do it so next day he brought his whole crew in we had like seven cars that we brought out to the middle of the desert it was like an hour drive uh shot and it was like 120 degrees dripping sweat you get out of the car and you're just immediately soaked (laughs) that's insane and uh yeah we shot for like five six hours that day and then headed back um but yeah it's that that, that was a really fun Mm -hmm. one and that was all free i just i knew it was gonna bring on more work with how tiktok works and i was like this is gonna do well on tiktok absolutely just knew it would. you built the story up as you should and you know you got to enjoy a trip and still do what you love at the same time you know yeah. so in a way it is free but like from a business brad side that that's a tax it's like deduction. a market marketing expense essentially instead of just paying for to blast your video on instagram or something you're like why not just go shoot free stuff mm-hmm. honestly i mean it's genius yeah it's, yeah. it's smart and for the for the amount of work that'll come back in return from from doing something that hopefully does well on social mm-hmm. media, uh, I mean, you'll make that back times 10. Yeah, there's a lot of social media people time. that that give away things for free. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. Mr. Beast, you know, gives away so much stuff, spends so much money to make these videos, but he's making it all back. Oh, yeah, giving it away like big DOS goes and just gives like iPhones out to people and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it's, yeah. it's all marketing. It's also, it's, it's the best, it's the best way to market. Honestly, it really is. Mm-hmm. And I want to do more of that. Like I, this year I, I want to get be- more into YouTube and giving back. I did a, a laptop giveaway last year. Oh yeah. I do remember yeah, that. Yeah. On TikTok. And that did really well. I actually grew like, like so 2000 followers. Or yeah. Something from that, yeah, absolutely. You know? Um, I don't know. It seems like so long ago. Yeah, seriously. I'm <laughs> so crazy. Dang. <laughs> I should give away fun. something. I have 300 on TikTok, so maybe I'll give away like a... <laughs> <laughs> Here's a mouse pad. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. Gaming keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> since, we're, since we're on the top of, of goals, you know, what are, what are some of your personal and goals for the business, <clears throat> short, medium, long term, for all of those? For sure. I mean, stemming off of what I was just saying is uh, being able to give back as much as I can. I I want to be able to do that and uh, give back in a in a big way eventually down the road, like giving people, getting young creators that are that don't have gear or are just really good at editing or want to learn how to shoot, getting them that that equipment that they need and coaching that they need. I really want to stem into that. Uh, hopefully, mid this year. I mean, things have just been hectic for me, but I'm trying to 
I guess, grow uh, a team first for myself. That way I can get to a point where I can somewhat sit back and kind of oversee things. Uh, and then, I mean, you're never going to just sit back and never. it's never going to be easy. You're always going to, especially have, you yeah, <laughs> <laughs> having your own business. So you're going to, you know, you're always going to be putting 10, 15 mm-hmm. hours in daily and that's like a regular, but, um, yeah, I want to, I want to get to a point where I can help out, give back, do courses, um, and yeah, get people to that next level. And then f- for myself, just growing out a team, getting, uh, more projects on a, on a higher level. And now that I have this JLo project under my belt, I feel like I can reach out to a lot of people on a, a higher level and, and cl- hopefully close some, some bigger deals like that. Absolutely. It's like two questions. Um, one, so how big of a kind of a team do you think you're looking for? And like, what, what roles are you trying to fill to get rid of? And then secondly, does the JLo thing kind of give you more confidence going into bigger deals like that, knowing you have tackled something like working with an international superstar, you know what I mean? You kind <laughs> 100%, of hundred percent. Yeah. Who, who, how many people can say that really? Yeah. It definitely gives me a lot more confidence. Um, I still think like I'm, 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 I like to think I'm a humble person and it's always going to be difficult going into big deals regardless of what it is. Um, but for sure, knowing that's under my belt and, and they know that it, it helps a lot. For Working sure. with those big teams is something, you know, a lot of people want to deal with only people who have been in that situation, mm-hmm. you know, like with the Lauren thing, like I've never been in a situation and that's very small scale where their managers on both sides are there and she has, you know, the, uh, the wardrobe people there. And I'm like, what in the world? Like, there's a lot of people here <laughs> just for this shoot, you know? Yeah. Um, but what you just explained with the JLo thing where there's, you know, caterers, COVID testing, like probably security, you know, yeah, most of them, yeah. around the whole block, they had security guards, uh, yeah, it was, that's it was a lot. It's so insane, shot. you know, directors on top of shooting teams and all that good stuff, you know, like somebody who is not, you know, afraid of that or who works well with other teams is probably, you know, something that potential big companies like that are going to look for as well. Yeah. Um, and then what, what roles were you looking to fill? Yeah. So I think f- for me, it's just having editors, editors take, I mean, editing takes up 90% of my life, mm-hmm. you know how it goes. Yeah. Um, so having like quality editors that have a similar style mm-hmm. as me and we, and we vibe and, uh, we could work together well would be massive for me. And then also shooters that are, that are reliable that I could, that I could bring in on, on mm-hmm. a whim and, and be like, yo, we have to shoot tomorrow or next week or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be really helpful too. Um, so if there's any, editors out there that are looking for a job let me know (laughs) specifically editors yeah Yeah. i feel like editors are in high demand for sure very much so i mean that's that's the hardest part about any shoot you know the shooting part is actually so tiny you know compared to everything that's on the back end from finding music sound effects transitions and actually laying out the storyline you know like that's man it's so much work even the most basic editing of this podcast for reels yeah it usually takes like two hours to Mm -hmm. listen through it and and cut up reels i couldn't imagine doing something (laughs) like that i mean this is like the smallest of small scales and and it's still taking me two hours you start talking about (laughs) advertising and every second counts yeah it's like like, down to the down to the single frame yeah absolutely Uh, especially when you're working on like a project project mm-hmm. like this like with JLo is like every single frame I had to make sure it was like perfect picture perfect yeah, yeah absolutely that's insane um and then I mean finding shooters like as a creative you know we're in this field because we're control freaks mm-hmm. you know so giving away a little bit of that control is scary I mean even hiring a second shooter for anything is absolutely terrifying yeah. you know like things can happen you know like having somebody there that you trust and a big pool of those people because everyone's schedule if you're good your schedule is crazy you know so to pull somebody away you know that that's super tough too so you have to have you know a b c d e string you <laughs> yeah, know like 100 of people that you can pull from you yeah know? and I, this project actually was like one of the first times i ever tried to outsource some editing mm-hmm. uh, i had two different editors which i love their work on on instagram like they're there's one that does like really dope, like live shows, uh, mm. live show edits. And he's, I love his shit, but then I tried to have him do some stuff for me, got the edit back. And it was just like, this doesn't look like my work at yeah. all. And so like just finding the the right fit, I mean, it's going to be difficult, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I know there, there's Worth, somebody out there for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have a very unique style to begin with. Yeah. Um, like I said, when you said you were doing weddings, I was like, how in the world, which you're probably not doing weddings now, but how in the world, you know, (laughs) did 
are you going to do that? You know, like yeah. I think of slow and you're like, nope, we're going to throw a rager. It's going to look <laughs> throw a rager and some FPV yeah, drone in there. You know, like that, that was another big thing too. Your FPV drone guy is fucking dope. Christian, you know? my man. Absolutely dude. dope. Guy is insane. He's going to be the next Johnny FPV for sure. That's super insane. Yeah. Man. He just did. I was actually supposed to shoot with him on Saturday. Uh, he did this like crazy stunt plane shoot. Did you see that? No, dude. No, absolutely you need to not. Look that up not on yet. Instagram. Yeah. Those shots are fucking nuts. Um, but for midsummer, we're planning something like crazy. We're gonna do hot air balloons, like skydivers jumping out. I want a plane on the middle of the runway, having a stunt plane fly over it. That sounds <laughs> like, like a logistical crazy nightmare. That I just you should you know, come. Eat. That sounds like good practice. <laughs> that, that's how Kenny gets you. You know, it's like it's gonna be crazy fireworks everywhere. You should come, man. It'll be the most stressful time of your life. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be great. It. We'll probably so miss our flight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this dude is the king of showing up to terminals ten minutes before Get the outside plane of takes his off. comfort zone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he definitely keeps the blood pressure up. That's for damn sure. Yeah. So, so like by building a team, um, would that would you? Would the goal be to like for that team to take on multiple different projects? Yeah, like I think, outside of telecast, so you can yeah. pick up other stuff and still work with them too and everything. Yeah, and eventually, yeah. once the guys have their own tour and stuff, I would like to build out a team at least of uh, videographers that can film and I can direct on tour. That way, uh, it's not so high stress, and I can just point them in the right directions. So we can go to the venue before. Uh, during sound check, I could be like, you guys need, you need to be here. You need to be there. Uh, you need to be here at this specific time, uh, at the end of the set to take this photo, which I fucked up on one of the sets. Sorry about that guys. <laughs> <laughs> like the big pivotal. Yeah. yeah. Like they stand up front, hands up. Yeah. The everybody lights goes crazy. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I missed that shot in, uh, where was that? Detroit. You live and you learn. (laughs) I mean, you're a one man show and you're spread thin (laughs) editing and shooting photo and video one camera one camera yeah that's so insane you know yeah. like i tried though i i booked it from the back of the venue i was getting like far away <laughs> shots i heard the song that's my cue to be on stage and i was like oh fuck i booked it up to the front of the stage gashed my leg on the front of the stage <laughs> and i was there security's but, grabbing your kid i was there i just <laughs> missed focus yeah. i just missed the photo <laughs> yeah. oh man but it happens that's right. you know there'll, yeah. there'll be another show i hope they're know. not too mad they will get over it. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's insane. But. So we have a we have a reoccurring uh, question on the show, and it's uh, what do you want your lasting legacy to be? Being able to help, honestly, as many people as I possibly can. Uh, at the end of this thing, like being uh, an inspiration to others, and knowing that your goals are much more achievable and closer than you actually think. If you just go out and make it happen and start connecting with people, um, that's the biggest thing for me. Is being able to be an inspiration and help others long term. Absolutely. I think you are well on your way to doing that. Um, from my understanding, there's a video with behind the scenes shots coming real soon. Yes. Can you tell uh, people where to find that? I will be posting a behind the scenes video of the JLo shoot uh, probably Friday next week on YouTube, Kenny G Films, uh, on all socials. So check it out awesome cool. man well i'm glad we were able to make this happen before Same your way. next leg of the the tour uh this has been the lasting legacy podcast check us out anywhere you get your podcast good night